Welcome back to a, another issue of Hops Geek News, a podcast where we talk about comics and news and beer and pretty much anything pop culture, essentially. I am one of your two hosts, Mash, and I am here with Hoppy Mommy, what it does. What it does. It does not much yet. It's still very <laughs> early. Well, I know it's earlier for you. It's almost 11 in the morning over here on the East Coast. Yeah, we're recording in the morning first thing because I plan on doing nothing but watching football all day. The Packers, I got a hot date with them at 11 o'clock this morning and I had to do some homework. So we're recording first thing in the morning, but it's never too early for beer in which I have a fresh patch from Wormtown Brewing in Worcester, Mass. Ooh. It's a uh, it's a good pumpkin ale. It comes in at just a nice little 4.5%, which is pretty light, especially if you're drinking at 8.30 in the morning on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they they do really good stuff at Wormtown. They have like a, a be hoppy and other things. And uh I got this sent oh, to me I've for my birthday. That. Yeah. So they send they do a lot of good beers, and I figured it was a good one because I picked all my pumpkins yesterday and we had about seven that we grew this year, our first year growing pumpkins. So I'm pretty stoked about that. That's pretty cool. We tried to grow pumpkins one time and it the vine like took off in the backyard and then it just died overnight. Yeah, they're really finicky. Like it got cold and now the vines died right away. And I was like, okay, I guess it's just time to go out and pick them. They're still somewhat green, but because we planted them a little late, but they'll orange out. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, we never even got actual pumpkins, but I was brewing beer at the time. So I'm like, I'm going to make pumpkin beer in the fall. I don't even think pumpkins can grow in Florida. I don't know. <laughs> it was a fun project. We tried. I'm making anything and everything, damn it. And we tried. We did watermelons when I lived in Florida. Um, we actually grew pretty good amount of watermelons. And then um, we were renting at the time. So our landlord said, no, you can't have watermelons. And so we tried pineapples and avocados, none of which actually worked out. So pumpkins finally worked for once. Maybe I'm starting to get a hang in this farm life. I don't know. Yeah, I kill everything, but my hot plant has taken off and I oh. accidentally have grown a mango plant. So that's kind of cool. Ooh. We were just composting and something popped up. So, but I am not on beer yet. I am finishing up my um, fall harvest Starbucks blend, but I have a coffee blonde on deck. Ooh, I, uh, yeah, I had some coffee first thing this morning. Um, I'm still, my sister, I found out works at Dunkin' Donuts. So I'm going to have to hit her up for some more of that pumpkin sauce. Um, that's Absolutely. my hookup. She's, she's pretty much like every, you know, stereotype of a New England female at the age of 18 who works at Dunkin' Donuts. Like it's pretty bad, but you know what? whatever still love her anyways uh, you guys love your duncan all right so should yes. we talk about our new segment we need a clever name i haven't uh, come up with a clever name Maybe i haven't either i'm bad at names so yeah somebody Good. if you're gonna listen to this this is where we fix all of our mistakes from the previous week it's it basically we're not experts segment i thought about calling it my bad but i don't know that so, might be a um, good one <clears throat> yeah Last week, we discussed the MODOK upcoming show, and Zola was mentioned, so they are one and the same. Clearly, neither of us have read those comics. So Zola becomes MODOK, a true robotic killing interface machine. In the MCU, Zola was the Red Skull's main guy um, that Tommy Lee Jones ate a steak in front of, and we get a glimpse <laughs> of him as um, MODOK in Winter Soldier when he's on that screen, and uh, Cap and Black Widow are like talking to him. So that's why they hold had on, his face all the way up. Hold on, hold on. Tommy screen. Lee Jones? Isn't that Tommy Lee Jones? No, that's not Tommy Lee on? Jones. That is a, uh, oh my God, I've blanked out on his name. That's He's in not Men in Black. No, that, in, you're talking about Captain America plays Red Skull? Yeah. That's not Tommy no. Lee Jones? What? No, 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 not the guy who plays Red Skull. The guy that eats the steak in front of Zola. He's on our side. The one that says he won't. Oh, his cap. you're totally right now. Oh my God. I was, yeah. See, look at that. That's why we have a whole segment called My Bad. Because <laughs> I, I heard Red Skull and Tommy Lee Jones, and I was like, wait a second, what? And no, I remember forgot. the scene where he he offers yes. him the food and then he's eating the food? He's like, it was hard to yes. get the steak out here. Now so, I remember. Yeah. There we go. Yes, we're back on track. Anyways. All right. So that's why they had uh, Zola's face so close in that shot. It was a nod to the comics. Um, in my nightmare rant, I mentioned that Disney never did anything with nightmare until a few years ago. Well, this past weekend, I was watching a show called Gester World. It's basically all the things that are no longer at Disney or that they were going to do that they never did. Mm -hmm. And they briefly had um, a display of nightmare stuff at um, MGM, which is now Hollywood Studios. So they would change it out for new movies. But I thought that was really cool. Um, they had it there around the same time Ninja Turtles was at Disney. Yeah, so, oh, um, I didn't even realize Ninja Turtles was at Disney. I had forgotten to, and then my dad was like pulling up old Disney pictures. I'm like, is this universal? He's like, no, it's MGM. I was like, oh yeah. Well, um, huh. but 
that's it. Yeah. If you catch any mistakes, slide into those DMS, call us out, we'll fix it. And then we'll credit you with a virtual cheers. Yeah. We will make sure to let you know, cause we are not experts anyways. We are just a couple of geeks no. nerds <laughs> who enjoy drinking beer and talking about this kind of stuff. And it's kind of an outlet for us. So by all means, please, please slide into the DMS, hit us up and let us know. Um, yeah. however, what kind of things have you watched or read this week? I didn't really do much reading. Um, I'm waiting for the final Batman three jokers, which is going to come out the day this airs actually on Wednesday. And so I'm kind of waiting on, I just haven't had a chance. I, I had a lot going on right. this week. It feels like, so have you read anything good or I've just been watching horror um, movies? Well, uh, winter soldier and, uh, not winter soldier Falcon and winter soldier came back in the comic. They had taken a hiatus after March for, uh, COVID. So they're finally back. Um, it's going to be a short run, um, I think there's only one left. So total, I think it's five or six, but it's kind of like a teaser for the show a little bit. It's got, um, uh, Zemo in it. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny though. I highly recommend it. If you just want like a little teaser before the show and a quick read, that's not too much of a commitment. Hmm. Um, but it's, you know, you see like the dynamic between the two, uh, characters and there's a murdering teenage fan and there's a huge, a couple that's like super Captain America fans. And, you know, they, they kind of make fun of it and they kind of have fun with it. And it, it's really fun. And Hydra's involved as well. So I don't know how much of the show will be connected to the comic, but it's a quick, fun read. So I recommend it. It's just Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. But I mean, they that took like a six month hiatus. I know like so everything's shut back. down comic wise. So it's kind of nice that it's funny that you would think that comics would be the one thing that would be able to still do production. Well, I guess not. Cause you got to mass produce everything. I got the illustrators and the writers can keep working, but then again, how would they be able to do if all the, all the factories and kind of stuff are shut down. So it makes sense. Well, and at first they just shut down everything. Yeah. But, um, I also picked up Robert Kirkman has another one, which I mean, obviously I love him. I read quite a few of his called firepower. So I only read the free comic book day one and I was intrigued. I'm not sure if I'm going to commit yet, but it was pretty good. Um, if your comic book shop still has the free comic book days, it's a great way to, you know, dip your toes into a new comic and walking dead is re-releasing all their issues in color. Um, I did get the first one. I'm not going to buy all of them again. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, I guess there were some times that they wanted to do it in color, but they never did it in color because of the gore factor. They didn't want you to be overwhelmed by the gore. But now I guess they're going ahead and doing it. Um, my comic book guy looked a little surprised that I didn't want to commit to the to, to <laughs> subscribing to the whole thing again. But I had the first one um, and I had I actually caught up on season 10 and I'll actually talk more about that into breaking news because there's a whole walking dead universe now. Um, but so that's pretty much all I've read. I haven't read too much. You know, the, the comics are always yeah, quick reads. They are. It well, takes two it. seconds to read comics. I did see that. I, you know, I keep seeing commercials for uh, Fear the Walking Dead and all that. And I noticed that uh, a familiar face keeps popping up in those commercials. And it's the uh, her Ashley from The Boys. Um, oh, yeah. I noticed she's in that Fear too. the Walking Dead. I, I don't watch Fear the Walking Dead. I don't watch The Walking Dead. I kind of. They all became trash to me after I watched the like the first half of season one of Fear the Walking Dead. That was it, and then mm -hmm. The Walking Dead I stopped watching a long time ago just because it got kind of stupid in my opinion. Yes, but season one of Fear wasn't good. It got, it did get better. I'm not up to date on Fear, but um, there yeah, there's a whole bunch more that I'll go into in a few minutes. But and then I watched some horror movies, which we'll talk about that weren't yes. the best. But <laughs> and I think that's all you watched this week is horror that's, movies. That's I'm guessing. So, <laughs> yeah, the month of October, I refuse. I mean, we watched. You know, Carrie, she likes to watch the nanny, so we'll watch the nanny here and there, and I'll play some video games or whatnot. But predominantly, October for me is just horror movies that I'll watch once a year, and so that's it's just like Christmas movies. You know, you watch them a couple times. That's kind of my thing. So I love, love, love horror movies. So that's all I've been doing. Um, like I said, I haven't read anything. Uh, I'll probably get back into reading probably next week, but I've had a lot of things going on. Um, going into the news, however, I talking about Falcon and Winter Soldier and how the comic book, well, they actually just wrapped filming for the TV show. So Good. I wonder if that means we are going to be getting, they were supposed to release already, but there's, you know, I think because they're planning on Scarlet or uh, WandaVision releasing, in 2020 with we'll get maybe falcon winter soldier in the spring then i'm not really sure how right. that's yeah they still have out. release dates for any of this no they but they finally finished filming so that's a good thing and anthony mackie yeah, was absolutely. pretty much talking about how he hated filming during covid because there'd be like a little 
Czech Republic man whose sole job was like, if you get within six feet of each other, he comes up and like pokes you with a stick and all this other kind of stuff. <laughs> and I think it was all tongue in cheek, but it's still pretty funny. He's like, yeah, this sucks. Kind of, you got some dude whose sole job is just to go up and poke you with a stick and get you away from each other. And it's like, I feel like you're going to need to be within six feet of each other while filming a lot of these things, especially if fight scenes and everything like that. So as long oh, as you're yeah. getting tested like an athlete, then who really cares? But um, yeah. allegedly, we are going to be getting some old Marvel characters. I'm not really sure who. They haven't mentioned who, but expect to see some throwbacks, callbacks. I'm hoping that we get like Justin Hammer and things like that to kind of show up because they teased AIM with Justin Hammer back right. in uh, Iron Man. So maybe we'll get some of them. He was such a tool. He was, but I loved it. He was still such a good character I yeah. and I, that I want more of him. He's such an idiot. So maybe we'll get some of them. And then, you know, of course, the set photos, you have Zemo, he's maybe teaming up. They uh, they did have toys release and spoiler alert for anybody who's lived in a hole. Um, apparently in one of the toys, you have Falcon and then there's Captain America, but it's not Steve Rogers. It's whomever, I think Thunderbolt Ross is going to try to make his new Avengers under the Accords. And so he gets yeah. somebody who's his own Captain America who kind of takes that mantle. But if you know anything about Thunderbolt Ross, he kind of creates like the bad guys, like everybody who goes into the, the, the little holding cell, I can't remember the name of it now off in the middle of the ocean. He gets like abomination, all them, they kind of create like Thunderbolts or whatever the hell they're called. I can't think now. Right. So well, that was I, talk. Wasn't there talk of abomination coming yeah. back? Because we last we haven't seen him since Hulk. No, and I thought finally that that was first of all that Hulk movie was actually good, and so it was nice to see Hulk go toe to toe with somebody who's like on his level. And uh, there's the been raft. talks. Yes, the raft. That's what it is. Um, well, there's always been talk of hey, they're gonna Thunderbolt Ross is gonna get his crew back together, or like get the you know the anti Avengers. What are you going to call them? The Thunderbolts, and kind of that was going to set up to be a villain, but that, that kind of died away. So I'm curious if that's kind of where their phase four TV shows are going to go into is these guys, especially with She-Hulk coming. A, oh yeah. Now I have Queen stuck in my head. Thunder, lightning, <laughs> very, very frightening. That should be their theme song if it happens. It, or like the trailer, since everybody's obsessed with like yeah, 80s rock bands in their trailers. That's perfect. Marvel, um, if you're listening. Yeah. Hey, million dollar idea for the price of free if somebody happens to actually be listening from marvel right um i'm not too sure are you excited for shang chi at all uh i i um i mean i'm familiar with the character i'm not familiar with the character at all other than what i've researched for this podcast um i mean i'm excited in the regards of it's an mcu show and the only one they've truly fucked up is in humans um true so i mean i'm i'm excited but i'm not like I'm obviously way more excited for all the other ones. Same. Well, good news. Shang Chi is wrapped filming as well. Um, I knew that the actor, he from following him on Twitter and things like that, he's he's been really excited and into the role and has really seems to have some good personality. So I'm again not familiar with Shang Chi whatsoever. However, if the movie's any good, I will dive headfirst into it. Um mm. So yeah, they wrapped filming there. So it seems that movies are filming again. We just have no idea when we're actually going to ever get right. movies because they're probably playing catch up. Right. Well, I mean, Wonder Woman, they already said is never going to go into streaming. They're like, no, this is going to go into theaters, but Wonder Woman finished filming in 2018. So if it comes out next year, then that's Jeez. three years since that movie has been wrapped filming, which is kind of ridiculous. Wow. So yeah. At some and they point, can't move forward. no, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, DC has all these grand plans and all these things that they're coming out with, like Shazam 2 is going to start filming in 2021. So I think March, they said. But you have movies like Black Widow and Wonder Woman who have been done being filmed, supposed to have released, like Wonder Woman should have released a year ago, just about. And then they were like, no, June 2020. And then it keeps getting pushed back. And now Patty Jenkins is like, it's never going to go to streaming. This is going to go to theaters. And it's like, at what point do you just, hey, this is one of those things where movie theaters are not going to be open and no one's going to go to them anytime soon. Just Right, they're going to be it. one of the last things to open because right. people are so close together, yeah. Maybe they'll put plexiglass in between every single chair. <laughs> that or, I mean, that's going to be a bitch and a half to probably clean for movie theater workers, so maybe give them a raise. <laughs> but 
that, that nobody's really going to go. bleach on the whole theater yeah. in between. <laughs> it's just like the sprinkler system sprays bleach all over everything. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you I see don't know. at Disney now, they have like in the lines where they couldn't separate the lines to space mm-hmm. them out. They have huge plexiglass between lines and mm-hmm. on rides. They'll oh, have, really? you know, not every single chair, but like on Star Tours or on Soren, where you have like people in a line, like they'll have like four seats and then plexiglass and then four so they can fit more people on each ride. And I don't see them ever taking that stuff down. So once we're past this COVID thing, at least maybe people will get sick less. Yeah. In general. I mean, maybe. Yeah, that's true. I I, I think there are some good things that are coming from this whole COVID thing, because maybe we're going to start being more cleaner as a whole population, perhaps, or people uh, learned how to wash their hands. Yeah. People learned how to wash their hands or look at that. We have a mass production of hand sanitizer from everywhere and anywhere. Just keep it on you, I guess. But right. uh, All right. So what else you got? We got, so I know, I know you've never probably played these video games, but uh, Tom Holland was cast as Nathan Drake in Uncharted, which is, I've never really played the video games. They're, They're kind of like Indiana Jones is the way I kind of took it as, um, However, they just finished filming, so it is confirmed that Spider-Man is going to start filming in Atlanta next, or possibly next week, but definitely beginning in November. They're looking at to start filming, and of course, you know, nobody's confirmed Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back, but all signs point to possibly them coming in, and we already know we have Jamie Foxx's Electro coming back, so that's going to be filming soon, so we might have a Spider-Man movie that's ready to go as soon as we can go to theaters again. I expect more news coming from that. Tom Holland posted a picture on his Instagram being like, hi, I'm Nathan or whatever. And now he's going to be going to Atlanta because Georgia has no rules either. So that's exciting. At least we have Spider-Man starting to film. And I think we'll by by end of this year, once they do start filming, we'll probably have a good idea of who's in it and who's not because nothing stays secret forever, especially in this world. No. No, but it's interesting that they're doing a whole like Spider Verse into the MCU. That's very. Uh, I like it, but I, I, I don't, don't like it though. I, I guess I'm just I'm confused as to how they'll do it. But it's not the first time I've thought, well, how are they going to pull that off? And then they pulled it off. Right. So. I just I just don't like it because I feel like we haven't seen Spider Man become Spider Man in New York City yet. You know, you the the comics, everything you know about Spider Man is you know he's just an average kid just with superpowers well, and. Then- and- you have J.K. Simmons, though, is in two universes, so how are they going to... Yeah. Well, J.K. Um, Simmons won't be... I don't think he's going to be back as Jim Gordon anytime soon. And then also they announced that he his take on um, Jameson is going to be completely different, nothing to do with the first iteration that he did. So he's going to be basically like a blog writer is the way I've taken it for you know something that's like QAnon one of those conspiracy theorist sites and then he's gonna eventually work his way up or something like that and so i would like to see that and him start working at the bugle and just all those minor interactions that are pretty stupid maybe in comic books or people don't necessarily think about but it's spider-man right. so it'd be nice that he stands on his own and you actually see him as that friendly neighborhood spider-man and he's not constantly leaving earth or what have you right um, no, I just from, I loved him in Spider Man. He just he looks like the comic book character. He's just perfect. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I love. So I feel like he would play it perfectly. So I really want to get some of that, and then hopefully they can get some you know Osborne in and kind of going from there. And this isn't the last time we see Tom Holland as Spider Man, even though Sony and Marvel can't get their shit together. So we'll see. However, how did you ever see Suicide Squad? Yeah, that's Academy Award winning Suicide Squad to all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what did you think about the Joker, Jared Leto's Joker? I know that there's a lot cut out. David Ayer has said that yeah. hey, they butchered my cut, all this, and there's like a release the air cut kind of deal because everybody has a secret cut of a movie because this is where we're at now. Well, I thought there was promise there. I don't care for Jared Leto at all as a as a human being. Um, yeah, but he was. I don't know. I don't really weird. know anything that I loved him in. Yeah, um, well, he's a good actor, but he definitely did some weird shit on the Suicide Squad, like sending people dead pigs, oh, yeah, rats, yeah. all that stuff. And I'm just like, that he's just weird. But in Zack Snyder's Justice League, um, Jared Leto's Joker's coming back. They're filming new scenes with him, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, all of them are kind of filming some new scenes. And so apparently his Joker's going to make an appearance um, along yeah. with... Uh, Deathstroke. So we're getting Deathstroke back, which I know I was excited for that version of Deathstroke because Joe 
I can never pronounce his last name. I always remember him from How I Met Your Mother, just two dudes getting brunch. Um, oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> there, he's going to be back as well. So interested to see how his Joker comes into play. Um, I know that a lot got cut out. I hated the tattoos. It was all so fucking stupid. So, it almost seemed like it was trying too hard to have it be yeah. his own unique Joker. Like, I get it. Everybody has a take, and, you know, Heath Ledger set the bar. Um, but, like, dude. Yeah, just... but what's this? <laughs> Jaquan Phoenix did great with, yeah, with being I mean, Joker. It's exactly. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like, yeah, it was too much. Yeah. Yeah. But I I mean, I I think they're also pairing them with Harley Quinn in that movie they were trying to do. I think that what they're probably going to end up doing is trying to set up like a Harley and Joker movie at some point or the Gotham City Sirens. Well, yeah, I think what they're going to do is have like the Gotham City Sirens. So you'll have Poison Ivy, you'll have Harley Quinn and uh, whoever else. And I feel like Joker, if they eventually ever make this movie, because I know Margot Robbie has really wanted to. Um, it's Joker trying to go after her and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens. Who knows? Um, what we have more DC news. Uh, Shazam two, like I mentioned, is going to be filming. They're looking for three sisters. Um, they're going to be villains allegedly. We don't know too much. Um, but what word has gotten out is that one sister is going to be seventeen. Who they're kind of they have Zendaya as like their their model for that. Um, you're going to have another, an adult who they think Eva green, who was in a bunch of movies. I like Eva green. She was in James Bond. She was in, um, a bunch of, bunch of movies. Uh, I always like her as an actress. She's always played someone creepy pretty well. And then Helen Mirren is rumored to possibly like the old version, like an old woman, part of the sisters. And they're supposed to be, um, production starting in spring. They're just looking there. So shazam one was good and i think shazam two is going to introduce more of us into black adam hopefully because eventually they'll fight so nice i was just looking her up yeah she looks very familiar she's in a bunch of stuff yeah i can't remember eva green eva green's in a ton she was in in um, 300 Sin city sin city 300 she was in uh that one where she runs at school um no, oh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar, yes. Peculiar Children. I didn't Dark care Shadows. for that movie, but Dark Shadows was decent. That's with Johnny Depp where he's like the, the vampire yeah. and she's the evil vampire. That was a good movie. But yeah, she's yeah. <laughs> she, she's she's always good in everything she's in. So it'd be pretty cool to see her play some sort of creepy sister, I guess. But that's all rumors. We don't know. She does creepy good. Yes. Yes, she does. Uh, I think it's because she's probably so pale. That's Maybe that's why pale people tend to but be she's creepy. still like attractive too so yeah as well um aside from that uh there was an article that came out this week mark ruffalo was talking kind of about kevin feige and how he was ready to leave marvel if they refused to have any sort of diversity so back in 2012 he was really kind of clamoring about like hey if you don't see me on set tomorrow this is why and uh ike pearl 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 muter however you pronounce it, he's the former CEO and he's the current chairman of Marvel Entertainment. Well, he didn't believe that anybody would go for a female starring superhero movie or any sort of like LGBTQ so it's characters. 1912? Well, you know, you get these old white dudes in charge of things and they're very much like, you know, they're set in their ways, which is so stupid. Come on. Clearly, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. There's a market for it and there always will be and it's nice to have diversity. You need to have diversity, you know, and it means a lot to the the kids, whether you're any sort of like ethnicity or a male, female, you know, gay, straight kind of thing. Like, it's nice to see that representation. Well, Kevin Feige was like, hey, this is the future of Marvel. Um, we, I want, you know, these LGBTQ character superheroes. I want, you know, black superheroes. I want woman superheroes. And basically if he didn't fight for that we would have never had movies like black widow coming out and it's gonna say black panther or black panther and kevin feige was about to leave he said straight up like i'm gonna leave if i don't get to have this and now look at what it's done i mean the guy knows his stuff but imagine a universe where he does leave and then he goes to dc and then builds that dc universe and we never get the marvel things that we got today so kevin feige is always always doing great things and paving the way and it's really nice to see um again because just having as a kid you look up to a lot of these characters you know and you think hey they look like me so i can be a superhero so shout out to kevin well, Feige. every you know different character of ethnicity sex sexual orientation like they bring something different to it and i always like enjoy just seeing the 
especially growing up in the States and in South Florida, yeah. it's like you just, you're used to seeing a diverse group. And so I don't know. I feel like it almost makes it more believable than just having a bunch of white dudes. Well, yeah, you get a bunch of like generic. But, uh, we don't really like have any gay characters, though. So. <laughs> yeah, watching... I've never watched The Bachelor. Sorry. Well, they're all generic white <laughs> dudes for the most part. So it's like watching that The Bachelor superheroes. Um, oh, and second of all, how dare you? The Bachelor is awful television. Everyone should not watch, but I've watched more than my fair share. <laughs> We were watching SNL last night and I'm like, I never feel like the bachelor scenes are funny. Maybe because I've never seen the show. Although the one with Adele last night was actually pretty decent. Oh, I did see. Um, I don't even watch the Saturday night live anymore. i am be honest. I, I, I really mainly watch it around election times. It's the only good thing that mm. comes out of an election. Season. Thank God. We are like a week away from this shit being over Yeah. or we well, get another four years there. of pain, <laughs> suffering and misery. So nothing ends. I don't know. Oh, uh, neither one. I, know, yeah, I just want to point out okay. it's actually snowing. It is snowing right now. I'm looking out my window and uh, we have snowflakes. Hell yeah. That's weird. I need it to calm down for another week because as soon as I see snow, uh, I'm going to become a Santa slut. So pump the brakes. I'm still in Halloween It's 84 degrees and sunny out my window. Nope. It is snowing and in wonderful Idaho. Um, That's insane. God, I love snow. Um. But okay, so we don't really have though any gay characters in the MCU. We oh. had the one Russo brother in the um yeah the that therapy was... session in Endgame, but they haven't really introduced anybody. I can't think of anybody at least. Mm, I can't think of anybody. So does that yet. mean maybe we're gonna get some of those? Because I know in the comic books they have some, but I mean, ten percent of your character should be gay. Ten well, percent of the population is. You want to do an adequate representation? I think there was rumors at Valkyrie that she was supposed to be playing. She's kind of like the first big you know gay character but i'm not 100 percent sure on that other than that yeah like the the well, they Russo haven't brother, touched on her sexuality at all no i just remember there was rumors things like that um and then of course yeah we do have the Russo brother his small snippet there so i think i i want to say in phase four they're going to introduce some more of those characters which you know i'm cool with it you if should. it fits the story i'm cool with any i, I don't care i just love to see superheroes and so right. it doesn't matter as long as it makes sense for what's going on and we're not just like doing it for the sake of doing it and that kind of ruins, you know, Oh both yeah, sides. you don't want the whole storyline, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, I'm you excited for want to move forward with the actual story. What? Oh, uh, you got any got any other news? I I see that, you know, you talking about the boys spin-off right. and there's a couple things you got coming up. Yeah. So they are doing a The Boys spinoff. Um, so if you read the comics and you've been introduced to the G-Men, which is clearly making fun of <laughs> X-Men. Um, and it's like a superhero college that's run by, that's going to be run by Vout International. Um, so that's what the TV show is. But uh, in the comic, Huey actually at one point goes undercover into the G-Men and they're like frat brothers. It's like they're literally just partying and getting <laughs> drunk all the time. And But they're making millions of dollars because they're the G-Men. Um, so uh, they haven't started filming or anything. I think they're still putting together scripts, but it has been like greenlit or whatever the, the Hollywood jargon is. Um, but that should be fun. It's, yeah, and there, I mean, uh, Xavier is actually like a creepy kidnapper guy. So he actually kidnaps some of these kids and then turns them into superheroes. So that's, it's, it's clearly also making fun of Xavier. So that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, Mallrats 2 started filming. Um, or it's oh, going yes, to start filming in film. 2021. Yes. Uh, Twilight of the Mallrats. God, I so that's all I the information hear. I have on that so far. But I love I'll have awesome. plenty of information. I, I listen to, you know, all the fat man on Batman. I love Kevin Smith. He's just such a cool, good dude. He's such a nice hearted man. So I love anything. I know he gets a lot of hate, but I am absolutely here for any movie that he comes out with. I don't know why he gets a lot of hate. I love I love him. I think he's it's awesome because he makes um, movies he wants to make, I feel like. And he just talks a lot and people just love to hate on something, I guess. And his movies aren't anything groundbreaking but they're still entertaining about a bunch of stoners, I guess. And I don't know. Well, they're dick and fart jokes uh, and they make fun of themselves on that. <laughs> but um, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening probably do know this, but in Captain Marvel, Stan Lee, who's in Mall Rats, is actually reading the script for Mall Rats because that movie takes place in the 90s. Oh yeah, that's so, right. Mall Rats actually exists in the MCU universe. Oh, wow. that, oh, yeah. He was talking about how he's in the MC. Yeah, I do recall that he was talking about this. So that's pretty sweet. 
Yeah. Um, and then Chippendale Rescue Rangers was supposed to be released in theaters as a live action movie. Well, it's now going to go straight to Disney Plus and it's going to be half animated and half live action. Uh, um, it's supposed to be like an origin story. I don't really know how that's going to work. There's no release date yet, but they have also mentioned that they are doing a Lilo and Stitch live action and a Robin Hood live action that will go to Disney Plus. But they're saying the Robin Hood is going to be based on the 1973 cartoon. So are we fox, going to have right? people dressed as animals? Yes. It's Robin just, Hood is a fox. <laughs> they go to a furry convention and just film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do that, but I thought that was interesting <laughs> worth mentioning. Um, no, this God. piece isn't really news, but if you like the Gooder running sunglasses, they have Batman and now Wonder Woman sunglasses. They're Never heard cute. of this before. Uh, Gooder sunglasses? I have no well, idea. Because you they're great for running because they like cling to your head and so when you start to sweat they don't slip is it like what age so, um i actually <laughs> no they look like <laughs> regular sunglasses um i wear them like when i go paddle boarding and stuff too so i know they're like secure on my head um yeah, but so i have ones that have little a, beers you wear on them glasses joke i saw it like, well, i was gonna say glasses. you wear glasses so you probably don't wear like no, my daughter doesn't wear them she has correct. transitions I'm wearing glasses right now. I don't wear sunglasses. <laughs> They're reading glasses. But... <laughs> oh, I have to wear sunglasses. I'm blind in the sun. Um, but yeah, so they're really cute. If you need some superhero running sunglasses, those are the Dude, ones for you. I would just like to talk real quick about the need to make every animated movie we loved growing up into a live action film that should never be it touched is... in the first place. Yeah, it's getting out of control. Like, why does Lilo and Stitch that? It's still not even the, the the body's not even cold on the Lilo and Stitch movies. It's almost gotta, it's eighteen years old. All right, well, let's let's pump the brakes there. You're gonna I'm gonna start having a midlife crisis mid show, but I don't understand why that needs a live action Robin Hood. Okay, well, we've seen many Robin Hoods. I don't really know how you're gonna do a live action if you're doing the Fox version because yeah, I don't know either. I, maybe weird. they're just gonna be following that specific story of Robin Hood. I really don't know. Chippendales like was- too, like no. No. But I was telling my daughter the other day, like they do this because they already have an audience for it. So they're guaranteed a certain amount of people to watch it because it's like, you know, oh, I love yeah. Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, I'll watch it. Although my daughter wouldn't watch Lion King. She said the animation was unsettling. I have never <laughs> seen, that. I haven't the, seen the Lion King yet either because for that same reason. It's like, I, we don't need it. Apparently they are going to be making a prequel for the Lion King on how Mufasa came to power allegedly yes, this was on our last episode yeah it, no please make it stop just make it stop disney all right please come up with some original the, ideas the lion king the you can't even call it live action because it's not like they had another name for it because it's not actually live action but um State. the the one guy from parks and rec that like yells and then seth rogan were timon and pumbaa and so there were you they changed a little few things and they were my favorite that was <laughs> I mean, I love the original characters, don't get me wrong, but it was funny when like uh, Pumbaa makes a comment like, and nobody was there for me. And then Timon's like, I was always there for you. I resent that. <laughs> so it was it was funny to see like an updated dynamic with them. But for the most part, yeah, these movies are following the main storyline. But it's like I said, I think they're rehashed. just doing it because they're guaranteed to make a certain amount of money. Although I never saw Lady and the Tramp. I heard it was terrible. I never, I forgot I, that they made a live action Lady and the Tramp. As everybody yeah, should forget these live action movies, just stop it. Just stop it. Well, it was the first movie I think that they released straight to Disney Plus after Disney Plus o- or oh, yeah, I think opened you're right. or started. So um, trash. we never got around to, yeah, it was trash. Trash. I'm trash. <laughs> All right. So my last thing is Walking Dead. Where did I do that? Because I had that on the reading one. Here we go. So um, I did catch up on season 10. So there was actually the, the episode I recently watched that debuted uh, October 4th was supposed to come out months ago and didn't. So they were like one episode left to like conclude this section or whatever. And then they had to stop filming. So there's still six episodes left of season 10 that won't come out till next year, but I had kind of given up on it. I wasn't as far behind as I thought, but I wasn't loving it, but I finished the comic and the comic ended so beautifully. I absolutely loved how they ended the comic. So I was like, well, I'm going to give it a chance, especially because when the Rick Grimes movie comes out, which apparently it's going to be a trilogy, it's not one Rick Grimes movie. They're going to do through three and they have confirmed that Michonne will be in it. They're creating a whole Walking Dead universe. We just need to squeeze it dry. It's going to look like fucking It's all they have left now. But um, I really actually enjoyed these last few seasons and they've introduced, you know, they're getting more into the comics because they're, they 
they're following more of that storyline. So I really yeah. loved the Whisper War stuff. And there are certain things I'm like, okay, are they going to follow the comics? Or are they going to do their own thing? So there were certain things I was like waiting for and anticipating. Um, and then we got a new character in the show, Princess, right. which she's from the comics. So as soon as I saw her, she's a very um, flashy character. So I knew who she was right away. I didn't love her in the comics, but it was kind of nice to see a new comic book face. Um, and then we got a glimpse of the Commonwealth, which the Commonwealth, um, I remember when I got that comic book at the shop, I was like, this looks like stormtroopers. And they're like, yeah, I know. Right. So this new community um, has like guards that look like stormtroopers, um, but they can actually hit zombies. They don't just miss all of them. Um, so, <laughs> so I actually did enjoy it. I will finish out that show. Um, I'm way behind on fear, but they are still making fear. Uh, and you know, Lenny, is it Lenny James um, Morgan? You know, he's yeah, in yeah, fear yeah. now. So he crossed over. Um, and they're actually, they just started a show called World Beyond. I watched the first two episodes, not a fan, probably won't watch anymore unless I hear it gets really good. So there's a community in Nebraska that I guess managed to thrive after the apocalypse started because you realize we're 10 years into the apocalypse now because um, they did, a, you know, a flash forward. And so now we're actually, it, the show debuted. 10 years ago this halloween right so they start and the show starts in current days 2020 and it's like these kids who were young when shit hit the fan and they've grown up in this secure safe community and don't really know what it's like living outside the walls um and but then they decide they're going to go on this mission and i'm not going to say too much for anybody who wants to watch it but it's just like they're naive teenagers and it's like they can't even kill like one walker <laughs> but I'm sure they'll find something and they'll get their own and it'll be right. whatever. And in 2023, Carol and Daryl are getting their own spinoff, which that makes me think like, well, I know they're good for the, the last season. And a half. Oh. So that is the whole uh, walking dead uh, universe now. So we have the regular show, Such which is almost headache. over. <laughs> we have fear. We have world beyond. We're going to have Carol and Daryl show and we're going to have three Rick Grimes movies. But people are clearly still, everybody I talked to is like, oh, I gave up on that show. But they're still making shows. So clearly a lot of people are watching them. Well, that and is that's kind of getting anything and everything they can because I know it's the end. So let's squeeze it for every last drop that we got. But because... it's not the end if they're starting all these new things and shows. And like, I didn't realize that Rick Grimes' movie was going to be three. Um, but that's why I wanted to give it a chance because everyone's kind of like, oh, I've given up and they have all these other things coming out. And, and honestly, if the comic book hadn't ended so well, I feel like I would feel different. But a lot of the stuff that happened in the comic book, those people are dead because they switch up who dies. But mm -hmm. then they also will be like, oh, well, this character's doing this story because this person died. Like um, Abraham and Rick were actually supposed to be closer in, right. they're close in the comic, but because they had Daryl, Abraham never got as close to, to Rick. But then they'll have like, oh, the storyline was supposed to be Carl, but they ended up doing it with Henry. So they do that a lot. So I'm wondering who will portray some of these characters if they follow the comic book. But That's, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? We shall see. I'll keep That's you updated not. since I you're not going to watch it. So <laughs> our main topic, after my drunken um, nightmare rant last week, <laughs> I'm going to let you take the wheel here because one, I took up all last week and two, you're a big <laughs> horror movie fan. And I just dabble in horror movies in October. So <laughs> I well, honestly, if there's like a job that I can do, it'd be doing special effects for like horror movies or just even I, I've been working on writing a horror movie with a friend of mine for the longest time. It'll probably never see the light of day or be anything, but it's been fun. Um, so I, I love anything about horror movies. So I love your slasher movies. I love your cheesy horror movies. The only thing I don't really like is, you know, the the gore porn kind of deals. Oh, um, yeah. That this just they slap, you know, like hostile, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I, I didn't mind the movie hostile, but at the same time, like I just it doesn't do it for me. I don't like seeing there's no need for just useless sex boobs. And that's like torture. We read the description torture porn on that yeah. last night. Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm good. I don't want to watch because we were on Hulu scouring. I was doing research late last right. night. Right. I don't. I don't. Yeah, enjoy my husband's movies like, like, "What that. about this one?" I like, you know, when there's actual. I not to say I don't even care necessarily about the plot because I love like your Freddy, Jason, all those movies and the plot and those movies are so god awful. Um. So yeah, I I love all kind. Of, my favorite ones are uh, like Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, The Strangers, The Exorcist, and then uh the OG zombie movie Night of the Living Dead. 
Um, those like are, the cliche kind of stuff. That's, yeah. That's, it's I love more fun movies. than scary. Um, and I, I watch any horror movie, like I said, but um, I just, I, I didn't really get into like the conjuring movies and things like that. To me, those movies weren't very good. Um, I know James Wan, uh, Aquaman director, he did those movies. I just never really got Annabelle, those doll movies. Didn't really care about those either. Um, Isn't that one heard, based on a real doll? I think she's in a museum uh, in the Keys or something. <laughs> supposedly. I, I never got into it. I didn't think they were they were frightening. Um, Hereditary, that's supposed to be a good one. I haven't seen that yet. And then um, there's there's a couple of like Midsummer. It's supposed to be like kind of like a thriller horror in a way where they go to like this cult out in the middle of Sweden or something. I haven't seen that yet either, but it's supposed to be good. And then you have like your shitty God awful um, the happening where they're being chased by the fucking trees and wind. That movie sucked. Um, the village by M night Shyamalan. Yeah. The happenings with Mark Wahlberg, Zoe Deschanel. Um, it's a M night Shyamalan movie. He doesn't really know how to do, horror movies or any movie really because he sucks we did six cents really well though that's six cents was great um so six cents was great signs i thought was great the village i didn't like the movie the village that movie i mean i I I heard the twist for that which i won't say on here if anybody wants to but once i heard the twist i was like i'm good yeah see i I enjoyed the movie up until the twist for the village and then the happening where like the trees are getting revenge on people and so if you you breathe in the wind (laughs) or something you die or don't kill yourself and it was stupid um huh movies like psycho i love i love movies like psycho so anything like that those i like a lot of movies that also make you think you know yes. they're more than just like scaring you on cheap scares but they also kind of make you think and it's a movie you're thinking about after the fact um mm-hmm. I, i'll kind of rank my my slasher movies how i feel so halloween to me is like the best slasher movie out there because they don't do a lot of those cheesy like the I would say they don't do a lot of those cheap scares, but if you watch like Halloween Resurrection or things like that, they kind of did, um, which they retconned Halloween. So it was, it, it kind of shows, so the original Halloween movie shows that you can make a suspenseful, suspenseful slasher movie without all the gore and useless sex that mm-hmm. we've seen in like your Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, they've used William Shatner's mask from a Halloween store. They just like bleached it out because it was $2 and they made this movie for dirt cheap. And so- that's kind of really? what the mask is. It's it's like William Shat. They had like that's William masks. Shatner. That is William Shatner's face is what they use for the Halloween mask, and they like they bleached oh, it out because it was like two dollars from a Halloween store. Um, oh so the gosh. first one came out in 1979. It had that's actually Jamie Lee Curtis's first movie ever that she's in. Um, she's a babysitter, yeah. and Michael Myers gets out, and it spurred like all your sequels. So you have like Halloween two, Halloween three, um. The Curse of Michael Myers, which Paul Rudd is actually in. Um, huh. There's there's like Halloween H two O, which takes place twenty years after. And is that the one where they have to sleep in his childhood house or something? And they show that's that Resurrection. Abused? So Halloween oh, okay. Resurrection has Busta Rhymes. There's like trick or treat. Yeah, 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 that one. <laughs> I enjoy them, but they kind of got out of control in that you know Jamie Lee Curtis was his sister and he's going after her on purpose, like. And where, and then you have the Rob Zombie ones where he made that just kind of got rid of all that as well. Once again, like his sister is some girl or whatever, and then he's going to find her. And those movies sucked. To be honest with you, I hated, didn't really care for Rob Zombie's version of Halloween. And then in 2018, um, Danny McBride, who is big in the comedic world, you know, he's in Tropic Thunder. And a lot with Seth Rogen. Pineapple Express. Yeah he wrote and then they made the the new version of halloween that we have seen and that kind of retcons everything before so we have halloween one and then the sequel is the 2018 version where he gets loose after all these years he's going to find laurie strode jamie lee curtis she's basically waited for this all her life and it's a really good movie if you haven't seen that it's fantastic okay. that's the newest one yep the newest one so wait in- they're so they're pretending nothing happened except the first movie? Yes. yes okay, so they, I didn't know all these movies weren't connected. So they have basically they people's different were, versions? They So they all were, but they're all shitty. And like they all got too convoluted and too like supernatural. And they just basically, Dan McBride, and they were like, nope, everything after number one never happened. So Halloween, you have Halloween, and then you have This Takes Place as a sequel all these years later. And uh, it's really gotcha. good. They're, they're coming out with two more. One of them should have act- released uh, on my birthday this year, actually. And uh, they moved it back to 
October 15th. Next Halloween. Um, yeah, they moved it to next Halloween. So they're going to have two more somehow. I'm not going to spoil anything that happens in the Halloween movie. Um, but some fun facts about Halloween 1 is uh, John Carp- Carpenter was the director. They t- takes place in Illinois, but they shot the whole thing in California. And what they did was they painted the leaves. They painted all the leaves <laughs> you see blowing around is they painted them to look like fall. Um, right. So imagine well, your job is to paint the leaves for this movie. And the, um, so they, the score was completed in three days by Carpenter himself. And it's that iconic, like I, that everybody, as soon as you hear it, you know, it's from Halloween, whether you've seen yeah. it or not. Um, so that's just a little facts about Halloween. My second favorites are the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Those were the first horror movies I ever watched. Um, something about going to sleep and somebody getting you in your dreams is kind of freaky to me because you you think when you're in your house, you're asleep, that's like your safe spot. Well, not so much. Um, and then there's a, a million Nightmare on Elm Street movies. They're all equally ridiculous. And Freddy Krueger is, he's like this child. He's, he's, he's a pedof- he's a pedophile for lack of a better word. The parents, they catch wind and they go oh. and they kill him and he gets like sent to hell and he comes back and he haunts you in your dreams. The, the kids on Elm street, he pray that preys on them in their dreams. And the way to kill him is you pull him out of your dream and then he's, he's able to be killed, but it's just recycles because you kill him. And then like he goes away for a while and then he starts coming back again and uh, you forget about him and he can't, the only way that he can actually be harmful is if you remember him. So as the kids start to have these dreams and start to remember him, that's where he gets his powers from. It's all supernaturally, but uh, Johnny Depp's film debut was actually in the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, spoiler, he dies. In a I was pre- going to say, I think I thought I remember that. <laughs> yeah, he gets sucked into his bed and it's like that blender um, where it gets shoots all up into the ceiling, things like that. So Johnny Depp was in that movie. Um, it's actually based on events from refugees who died in their sleep after having nightmares. That's kind of where the idea for this movie got made. Apparently, I I don't really know too much about that. And then, uh, the sweater, you know, the, the classic dark red, dark green, they made Mm -hmm. that because apparently the human eye has issues with those shades of red and green together. And so they, they made that sweater to kind of psychologically play with the audience for some reason. I don't know why. I, I, I'm not too sure about the science factor, but yeah. So the, the shades of the sweater kind of has messes with you. And then uh, Freddie's actually based off of Wes Craven's childhood nightmares. He dreamed of somebody similar to this when he was a kid and something that always stuck with him. So he went ahead and made Freddy Krueger out of it. And uh, Robert England is most famously known for playing Freddy Krueger throughout all the movies up until they remade it in like 2009 or 2010 they remade a nightmare on elm street trying to reboot it off the ground and it just never took it it was it wasn't bad but it wasn't great either and they just kind of let it die after that so we haven't seen those in a while um next we have friday the 13th series which these ones i don't mind but they're very 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 mindless i don't know if you've ever seen friday the 13th movies but like very, a lot of these, I've seen parts and clips, or I only remember parts and clips. I've well, seen more so of the Halloween of ones because they're Halloween, right? But yeah, there's so many of them. But the Friday the Thirteenth one, I always felt was sad. Like, wasn't he like, like teased or whatever? So Friday the Thirteenth, he drowns at you know Camp Crystal Lake. And actually, what a lot of people don't remember is the very first Friday the Thirteenth movie. It's his mom going around doing the killings. Um, I, I would say spoiler alert, but this movie came out in like the '80s, so at some point you probably should have seen it by now. Um, yeah, his mom does the killings, and then everything after that, it, they've made so many. So you have, like, Jason goes to hell, Jason takes Manhattan, Jason X, where he's in fucking space, and it's, like, some oh, futuristic, yeah. I think I it's, like, time travel. One. Yeah. Um, and uh, fun fact, he actually doesn't get his hockey mask until the third Friday the 13th where one of the stupid teenagers has a hockey mask on he's playing jokes well he kills him he's like hey this looks cool because he's always he was deformed and that's why the kids made fun of him is he always was deformed and in the second movie he wears like the sack with eyes cut out over his head and uh but those are the movies they're not bad but they're just all so they're so fucking cheesy and kind of dumb and uh we actually had mm-hmm. 2003 i watched it last night is you had freddie versus jason and you had Kelly Rowland in it and uh, a bunch of, there was a bunch of actors who kind of recognized. It was like somebody from Dawson's Creek was in it. Yeah, um, there's a bunch. Yeah. Uh, it, mo- those movies are just so stupid. Freddy, he he wants people to remember him again. And the way to do that is he wakes Jason up in his dreams and tells him to go to Elm Street and start killing everybody. And of course, it just, 
Jason gets out of control. Freddy eventually gets pulled out of his dream, uh, out of one of the people's dreams, and they start to fight and all that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of ridiculous. Um, but they're not bad overall. They also tried to reboot this, I want to say, in 2009, uh, and that was the last time we saw Jason. And I want to say LeBron James, actually, he has a production company, and they're trying to get the rights to – it's either this or Nightmare on Elm Street – but LeBron James is actually trying to do a reboot of one of these two series. Um, he's been working on it for like 10 years now, but the, the creators, they don't want to let go of the property. So maybe eventually we'll see a reboot. I would like to see these movies kind of rebooted if they do them properly, instead of just going for cheap thrills and cheap scares and shit like that. Because again, if you're just doing things cheaply, it's, it's pretty crappy. Right. It's um, Friday the 13th. He's going after. Yeah. So we also have next uh scream the scream movies i like they're they're those i've seen yeah they're good they always have a twist you never know exactly who's going to be the killer right they do have a twist to them and but the so there was four they've they've made a fifth they haven't come out with the fifth yet Um, i was gonna say how did i miss that one no they they have a fifth one it kind of got pushed back of course due to whatever the hell is going on um <laughs> the name of the thing which shall not be spoken yeah so they have a fifth one and the fourth one so the first one you have sydney prescott her mom gets killed and uh it turns out you know spoiler alert her boyfriend i wouldn't say i wouldn't say anything because okay. some people that's a that's a uh a thing that like that's yet, part of the best you have you have you know uh matthew lillard's in it i mean i know you it's have, old but uh courtney cox is in it you have um, that's how her and deputy Dewey David met Arquette. In yes. David Arquette's in it. Yeah. They got divorced and chill, but apparently they're still friends or something like that. I don't know. Well, but, they have a kid together. So I hope so. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have a production company together, so they're still whatever. Um, so but yeah, yeah, that's how they met. They're in every single one. Um, she plays Gail Weathers. Courtney Cox does. She's like this big time time reporter. Which in the third movie, if you've seen the third movie, her hair looks so fucking bad. It is. Oh awful. my god, with those bangs. <laughs> the bangs they have for her, it's just like Ugh. what the hell. Um, but I've never found Ghostface, you know, the whole screen mask killer Ghostface, to be scary whatsoever because it's more goofy. I f- well, I feel like in these movies, whoever is in the the costume is always getting their ass kicked in some form like they're getting beat up and stabbed like they're always constantly getting thrown downstairs or something and it's like this isn't scary because you could easily probably take this this whoever's in this especially in the fourth one when one of the killers is definitely not strong enough to kill like a grown-ass man um but i'll let people kind of watch that true yeah so the screen movies i've always liked for thrillers because they're very self-aware thriller you know slasher movies where in this oh, movie. you even have what Jamie Kennedy's giving out the rules for yeah. like, oh, if you have sex. If you if you're a virgin, you're more likely to survive. Right. And that's what he's yeah. So and that's and what I like. They're very self aware. Yeah, they are very self aware, mm-hmm. and they even like you know play off. They're making stab um, the parody version of like the actual events that took place in this universe. So though that's why I've always kind of liked those. Um, now, my perhaps scariest horror movie of all time. I don't know. Have you seen The Exorcist at all? Oh, yeah. The original oh one. Yeah. That movie. Oh, and then I saw the one with uh, Deb from Dexter. That was creepy. Yeah. So they, they've they done a couple versions. However, the original Exorcist, it's it's something about it always freaks me out. Um, like they the makeup team for the little girl was excellent. And she's just fucking creepy and terrifying beyond belief, in my opinion. Anyways, it's really I love old that people school. think that she like died and she's like, no guys, I'm right here. Like she's yeah. done interviews and stuff. Well, she's like I'm fine. That's because there's a lot of curse. There's like a curse around the uh, whole thing. So um, it's a, it's a slow burn old school movie, but uh, the house that they actually filmed in, it burned down in the only room that was untouched was the bedroom where they Ooh. filmed like all the devil scenes. Um, two of the actors passed away right after filming um everyone on set suffered some sort of loss or injury at some point and then opening night where the movie was actually played for the first time across the street there was a church that got struck by lightning as the film began to play so you know it it could be one of those things like you know coincidences um but it was actually the highest grossing horror movie of all time until uh it chapter one got remade which I liked that movie because I thought, you know, Andrew Skarsgård was really creepy and he played it perfectly. 
Oh. I was allowed to watch that movie way too young. So was my husband. We had right. lovely parents. Thanks, mom. <laughs> well, it, the, the, the original it with Tim Curry never freaks me out, but uh, the remake. That's I, the one I watched when I was yeah. too young. I well, didn't the, like the remake didn't scare me. It didn't scare me, but I thought it was pretty good. Splitting it into two parts um, was a really, really good. But with the exorcist as well, they had like people throwing up as they left theaters and things like that. And it, it's like this whole, I think a lot of the reason why it did so well is because everyone the word of mouth kind of like this movie's terrifying i puked during it or this that the other <laughs> um so i love the exorcist that's one of those i always like to revisit um there's have you seen the strangers with um mm. Liv tyler and he's another i can't remember his name um he's a big time actor as well so they're married coming back from a wedding they stay at a cabin um, one of like his friend's cabin or her brother, somebody like that in the middle of the woods and they're having marital problems. Um, the creepy thing about this is there's no music throughout the entire, the only music that plays is on this like record player, but like the suspense is very organically built up. So you never hear music played throughout. There's no background noise. It's just, there's three You don't people, know when to be scared. Right. And there's three people that um, start to come through and they start to like, mess with them and the whole reason behind it is probably is because they were home the the only reason why they start messing with them is because they knocked on the door and they answered and so it's really really creepy especially if you live in the middle of nowhere to right somebody just randomly come up and start messing with you and yeah i thought Do you know what if that's on a streaming platform right now because that sounds like um, one i would actually like i don't know if it's on a streaming platform um i owned it okay. on dvd at one point but it might be on like your hulu or your amazon or something it used to be on netflix so you can even double check netflix one last time because they typically have a good horror lineup so okay. they used to anyways netflix used to have a pretty good horror lineup now it's all like b version movies and sequels and shit like that um right well, now I want to watch the new Halloween and I want to watch that. Yeah. So I definitely I recommend the new Halloween. To do it. Um, new Halloween Strangers are two really, really good movies I recommend. Uh, Fuck Jeepers Creepers, number one. I'm going to shout out. I yeah. That movie scared the life out of me. I don't know why. I, I have no hate idea. that movie. And it was filmed an hour from my house. It was. Sure but I, I like will not drive at night in Nebraska or anything like that because to me, you're in the middle of the cornfield. They made three Jeepers Creepers. The third one I watched. It was shit, of course. The uh, the I've second been told one was, I should watch it because it will make me feel better. I mean, it will because it's so campy and crappy, whereas the first one's like purely terrifying. Um, the second one's kind of more campy and silly. It's not so scary. The third one's just they jump the shark and it gets so ridiculous but that movie's i don't know what it is the first one creeps me the hell out shout out to justin long he played in that one he was really good in that movie um the song i don't like the song either i, I think it's because like he's sniffing their underwear and stuff like i don't even know how to explain it it's so weird um, i don't even know if i so i had my eyes closed for a lot of it <laughs> yeah um Night of the Living Dead, like I said, this was back in the 60s, so it was pretty pr predominantly black and white. Um, it's like the first zombie movie. Um, it's really cheesy because in the 60s, you know, well, how are you going to make a really good creepy zombie movie? But they did it. Um, and it's a it's a really good movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I won't. It's kind of slower, but it's not a long movie at all. So I recommend it. The zombies are kind of more self-aware in the movie. They actually purposely attack people. Um, so go out there. Uh, that one's on Amazon Prime. Uh, the Shining. I, the Shining by Stanley Kubrick and starring Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall. That's another, people view it as a horror movie, which it is. It's a Stephen King. Um, it's like the first Stephen King f novel to get adapted into a film. Oh. Uh, I didn't mind the movie. I've always liked it, but to me, it's not like a Halloween movie, I guess. It is, but it's not. I don't watch it. I don't feel often. like it's as good as everybody. I don't think it's that scary, honestly. No. However, Shelley Duvall, who plays his wife in the movie, she was harassed relentlessly by Kubrick and he never told her what was going on. Um, like Jack Nicholson chasing her with the bat. She didn't know that was you know planned. Like he to get authentic reactions. So he like really messed with her mentally. And she's still like really scarred for life from filming this movie. And she had a lot wow. of mental problems and she looks rough these days, but it's because she was fucked with so bad on this movie that, you know, I really feel bad for her because he was awful, but yeah, I don't think this movie's as good as people say. Um, you can hate on me Jeez. for it. Uh, so Oh, and fun fact, the carpet in Sid's house from Toy Story is the same as the carpet in The Shining. Ooh. So, um, yeah. 
I have a few more I can draw on all day, but there's like, I want to hit on some <laughs> of the, <laughs> I do have a lot. So I wanted to hit on like the main ones people would know. So we have it, you know, it takes place. It's a Stephen King novel. Very, very long movie. The first one is with Tim Curry is actually like a TV series. How they produced it. Uh, they remade it with a bunch of big time actors, part one, part right. two. And James they go back McAvoy. and forth with the kids. Right. A really good movie. Kid actors were knocked out of the park. James McAvoy, all them. Jonathan Brandis was in it. Yeah. They, they all did really well. Uh, then you have Silence of the Lambs, Hello Clarice, you know, with Oof. Anthony Hopkins, Helen Hunt. Is it Helen Hunt? I get her. Um, no, it's not no Helen, Hunt. Helen Hunt's mad about I get, you. Yeah, I get her in. Uh, There's Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. I always get them confused yeah. for some reason. I don't know why. So they, they're in this movie, you know, Hannibal Lecter, he eats people. She's trying to solve a murder. And, uh, and they have a TV show now that's like a prequel with Hannibal. Yes, they do. And he's like, I'm having an old friend for dinner and he's eating this dude's brain. Like, yeah. Oh, and then what's it? Which I always forget which ones are which because they even have Red, Red Dragons, a prequel to oh, it. Oh, they, yeah. See, I never watched those. Um, what's the one Edward where um, was in Ray Liotta, one. he's like eating Ray Li or he's feeding Ray Liotta his own brain? I think that was the first or second. I think maybe it was the first one because she shows up to the dinner scene and yeah, he's eating his brain. Um, and Mads Mikkelsen, he's he actually is in the the Hannibal series, so he apparently is really good. I haven't seen it. Uh, some more. Stephen I watched King. a few episodes recently. It was it was all right. It was good. Yeah, I've heard great things. I just again TV shows. There's so many to watch out there that I just don't sit down to watch them all. Um, some more Stephen King. You have Carrie, which was I'm sorry, Carrie was Stephen King's first big adaptation. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, The Shining. The Shining. It was Carrie, and uh, he sold it for like twenty five hundred dollars or something like that. Wow. And fun fact, actually, is directors George Lucas and Brian. So Star Wars was casting for Star Wars at this time. So there was a joint audition between with George Lucas and the director of Carrie, Brian De Palma, and they both wanted you know the actors in each other's movies. So they they had the joint audition, and. Uh, Amy Irving was going for Princess Leia. Obviously, it went to Carrie Fisher. But uh, yeah, I had no idea that they actually did a joint audition. And it's about, hmm. you know, a girl with telepathic powers. And it kind of goes from there. Um, right. We've all seen that iconic scene. Was yeah. it Sissy Spacek? Is that who it is? With those? Yes, that's, how, that's exactly who it is. And she's got the blood all over her. And she kind of loses her mind there because she was picked on again. Uh, her mom's like that's some religious one I nut. Seen. It's a good movie, a uh, really good movie. They remade it with Chloe Grace Mortz, I believe, is who's the oh, okay. newer version. Uh, that one was okay. I mean, it was a rehash of the original. So if you've seen one, you've seen the other. Um, then we have Poltergeist, which it's a family. Their house is on an Indian burial ground, and uh, the the classic. She's mm-hmm. sitting in front of like the fuzzy television. They're she's like, here. they're here. She gets sucked into the TV. Um, also four cast members died during or after filming of this with to include the little girl she had like cancer oh and then gosh. she had like a she collapsed suddenly she had a lot of heart problems so she passed away like mm. not very long after filming this and uh steven spielberg used actual human skeletons on set of filming this movie um but apparently yeah that's another movie that was really cursed and people are always talking about how cursed it is they made a couple of them um i've only seen the first one and it's been a long time since i've seen it um Lastly, mm-hmm. one that I'm going to go kind of in depth with is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I refuse to watch that because it's based on real events. Yes and no. Um, so it's a really good Can't movie. It. It's really creepy. Like the family's super fucked up. And, you know, obviously Leatherface has some issues. He's going around with the t- chainsaw. He wears people's faces. Um, the one with Jessica Biel that they made in like 2000, that was a good one. Um, I, I like that. And Josh then, keeps trying to watch that. I said no. No, it, apparently they remade it as well, or they made another one. I didn't see the latest one that they made, um, but the 1974 version, the intro, it was filmed really cheaply, and it was almost documentary films like. Um, so, fun fact: with the Texas heat and everything, like apparently the set was miserable. Ooh. So it was, was 100 like, plus stunk. degrees in the middle of summer. The actors they like didn't wash their clothes at all because they wanted that authentic look and feeling so then like the food for the dinner scene and stuff it was rotting so like a lot of the food was rotting like the the animals caused like it smelled really bad on set so like in between takes they filmed the dinner scene in a single day so like they filmed for 24 hours straight and in between takes the actors are throwing up because the smell is so bad because they had the food out all day in the texas heat no ac in that house obviously 
And so it was just a horrible, um, the poor guy, there's like three people who played Leatherface, but the main guy who was playing him, nobody on set would talk to him apparently until like after they died so once they died then they would talk to him so like something about like feeling weird about it or uh authenticity yeah they wouldn't have like a disassociation with him yeah so the the poor guy he just would be alone on set all the time and uh you can actually have lunch at leatherface's house so it's in um williamson county in texas but it's no longer it's now a cafe called the grand central cafe and so they, they they don't really play anything off the movie, but obviously like you can go there and yeah, that's where they filmed the original one. And they've had a bunch of different, um, Lee, her, R. Lee Hermie, however you pronounce his name. He was in the Jessica Biel one where he played like the really, he was a sheriff and the movies are good. They're really freaky. Um, but aren't they based on some sort of like yeah, thing so that actually happened? Something like that. I, I vaguely know that, um, it's based on, it's not actually a true story, but there was like some sort of murders that were going on and uh, the director kind of knew some people. And so that's where he got the idea for the movie. Um, some other shout outs. So we have Dawn of the Dead, we have Candyman, we have Hellraiser. None of those movies I really cared about. You know, Pinhead, everyone's like, he's so terrifying. I don't care about those movies. Um, one you did watch last night was Chucky, the remake. I watched the new one. I've actually never seen the old one. So I, uh, I'm aware that like a serial killer possesses the doll's body. Yeah. So he hides out in a toy store and like he does some chant and he puts himself in the doll. And that, uh, okay. So that's more than movies, I knew. They're but... not scary. I would punt that fucking doll to the moon. First of all, like Chucky, that little thing comes after me. I'm punting it. Like if you die by that little two foot doll, then you're pathetic. <laughs> Jeez. Like, tell it how I, it is <laughs> those movies to me but i didn't really like the movies it was interesting though the the new one how they basically it was just technology like the doll yeah. was evil there's no it was she was just programmed it was almost like jessica rabbit i'm not and bad Mark i'm Campbell just made that way actually the voice of the chucky doll in the movie that's who the voice That's, was i wanted so to look Mark it up hamill is the voice um and you have aubrey plaza okay. who plays i in hear it. him now yes but it is i do like that version where how they were like based off the technology and how that kind of thing. So that was cool to me, but yeah. I don't really care for Chucky. It's not scary to me. He's just this little doll that you can Oh, and just... that's why he wanted, okay, that makes that one line, sorry, that one line funnier because the little kid wanted to name the doll Han Solo. Yeah. And then Mark Hamill's like, Chucky. <laughs> okay, that makes that scene yes. a lot funnier now. <laughs> Mark Hamill, yes, he was the voice. Um, I'm, of course, Mark Hamill does voice work so well. So I always loved his yeah. voice work. So he was, he was the best thing about that movie. But again, don't fucking care about Chucky. Yeah, it was terrible and it was cheesy. We also watched that mom and dad movie last night oh, with, with Nicolas, Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is so, himself. <laughs> yeah. Well, my husband's like, oh, why don't you watch this one? I bet he hasn't, bet MASH hasn't seen that one. Not many people have. And of course, yeah, I texted you last night. You're like, oh, I've seen And I was like, that movie was god awful. It was Sel- Selma Blair and Nicolas Cage. So I'm like, okay. And I even thought the same thing. I'm like, this is cliche Nicolas Cage. Oh, but yeah. it's like, but the description says for 24 hours, parents are killing their children something with the but, tv yeah but then there's i felt like the movie didn't end there was no conclusion they locked i them almost up basically right like the kids locked well the i don't want to say too much in case anybody wants to watch this oh but yeah you're right i felt like when it when it ended it didn't feel like it was over right it just kind of it's one of those like open-ended just randomly ended movies i agree right. um i have seen it there's not many movies that i haven't seen you'll come to find <laughs> but it was definitely one of those campy things i will say um you don't see anybody killing any children you don't see a single no, child actually no, 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 die no, no. It's so just, if you're like oh my god how can you watch like it's not like that at all it's pretty self-contained in that the the kids are running away from you know nicholas cage and all that in the movie so self-contained movie uh i thought it was okay but yeah nicholas cage is 100 percent aware of what he's doing he's just taking movies just to take movies anymore yeah i mean there were some funny parts but then like you thought like things were shifting at the end and then i felt like it just abruptly ended so i don't know it was interesting finally you know well some more shout outs to the lighthearted halloween movies you got hocus pocus which the plays on repeat i love that movie um then you know you have your halloween town from disney and you know your nightmare before christmas which we talked about last week so you kind of got your lighthearted movies then you have the evil dead franchise with bruce campbell i loved the tv show that they had for two seasons and then they canceled it so other than that that uh that wraps up our our little horror rundown there of 
good, so, good, a lot of good movies. Happy Halloween. Go ahead and watch for Halloween, whether you do it this year or next year. Um, next but week, yeah. we have a guest next week, uh, Micah Bowers. I hope I said his name right. He's he's somebody who follows us on our main show, Hops News Hoppy Hours. He homebrews and he's really into like he does a lot of like comic book stuff and he's he loves X Men. So we'll probably talk some X Men next week. We'll talk a little homebrewing and uh, to get ready for homebrewing day, which is not this Saturday but next Saturday. Yeah, I was gonna say it's homebrewing day. So we'll talk a little homebrewing action with him, and I'm super excited. He's he's really excited to come on and we'll share some beer and have our, our second guest ever. Um, and not to mention. Second. We have The Mandalorian airs two days from when this comes out. We have The Mandalorian airing. So we'll probably talk a little Mandalorian in there. Um, we'll probably dedicate a whole episode to discussing last season and then the first couple episodes of the new season, which there are a lot of big characters, supposed to be Ahsoka, uh, Sabine. They're all supposed to be making – this isn't a secret at this point. They're supposed to be making right. – they are confirmed to be in it. And uh, – Ooh, well, and I love all the actors that are showing up too. Like even Jason Sudeikis was just like a stormtrooper. Yeah, all yeah, these yeah. people that like grew up loving Star Wars and now they're famous. So they're like, hey, can you just get me in? Well, Bill Burr's like, in one. He is. Bill Burr was in. Uh, he's <laughs> supposedly going to make a comeback. He might be back in this this season at some point. Um, but you're right. Like, I need to rewatch. There's one. a lot of big name actors who are always playing cameos as stormtroopers. Like Daniel Craig was in The Force Awakens, and there's other like cameos throughout the Star Wars. So I can't wait. I'm excited for The Mandalorian. It feels like it's been forever, and we're finally getting some new TV shows with the boys. It hasn't even been a year. It hasn't. You're right. But um, other than that, you can catch us on Hops Geek News on the IG. Uh, Search Hops News on any platform you listen to podcasts, whether it's YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel. It's Hops News. Um, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Search Hops News. All your podcast platforms. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to find us there. Um, catch me on Twitter and Instagram at Matthew Tyler. Um, you can catch Hoppy at the Hoppy Mommy. And yep. uh, thank you. Subscribe, share with your friends, grow us, tell us what we did wrong, tell us what you like. And uh, like us, love us, call us out, and we yes. will give We're not you a perfect. shout out and a cheers. We're not experts. And if you know you've got some questions that you'd like to hear answered, you know, let us know. We always love answer questions. And if you want to come on and tell us how terrible we are yeah. and correct us. If you ever want to come on as a guest host, uh, hit us up again. So it's not just us rambling for an hour, hour and a half and uh, catch us Thursday nights, hops news, hoppy hour, where we talk with breweries as well. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. This has been a hops news production. You can find hops news on all your favorite podcasts and social media platforms at hops news. Cheers.